Hey, what's up, everybody? Today on TechLab, I am going to install Gen2 on Raspberry Pi 4 8GB. So, if you are familiar with Ubuntu or any other Debian based Linux systems, note that this is a different beast. Gen2 is geared towards experienced users, but that shouldn't stop you from watching this video and trying Gen2 since you already made it this far. So, today I am simply going to install Gen2 run a few applications to give you a taste of what it feels like and you can decide if this is what you want to run on your Pi as your daily driver. With that, let's get to work. We will be working with Gento 64-bit on Raspberry Pi 4 from Sakaki on GitHub. If you have watched my previous videos, the installation process is not any different. Get on your PC or Mac, download Gento image, get Balina Etcher and burn the image to an SD card or an SSD. Once done, remove the SD card or the SSD from your PC or Mac and insert it in your Raspberry Pi. Now, power up your Raspberry Pi, sit back and watch this magic. You do not have to do anything at this point. This should only take one minute or two. Your Raspberry Pi will reboot on its own to finish the setup. As soon as you log in, you will be greeted with this configuration screen. As you can see, you have a great amount of control right at the get-go. You have the option to overclock and it is easy to do. I am not going to overclock or make any changes just so we can see the performance at the lowest settings. If you decide to overclock, just make sure you have a fan on your Raspberry Pi. These are things that you normally have to dig for and find on your own, but the guys in Gen 2 are kind enough to present all these tools in the same platter. Everything in the applications menu is very responsive. Let's look at some internet browsers here. Let's try Aurora first. I decided to get me a set of two new Othernet dream catchers. I'm super excited. I wanted these for a long time. Um, don't worry, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you're not the only one. At the end of this video, you will know everything I know about these fun little interesting things. Okay, now let's try to lay some foundation. The internet browsing experience is not as good as what we saw with Ubuntu Mate, but I can see this issue being resolved quickly in the near future. Now let's check out Chromium. As it is the case with Aurora, I don't expect any performance improvement with no hardware acceleration, but it won't hurt to check. So there you have it, watch this and monitor the RAM and CPU usage. Without overclocking, you can see the CPU usage hovering around 99% in some instances. If any of you guys decides to overclock, feel free to drop me a message and let me know if that makes any major difference and your overall experience. Also, if you are curious, Netflix is not working yet. I came across a workaround a few days ago, but I can't seem to find it. If you guys figure it out, let me know. As always, thank you for watching. 
See you in the next video.